I recently did a video where the speed of a NOT gate affected the performance of a circuit. And so I got a little curious to see if I could actually measure the speed of the NOT gate. So how do you do something like that? Well, reasonably simple. I need to feed some sort of pulse or some sort of change in A and see how long it takes to change A naught. And so effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed A and I'm going to look at A naught as another signal and I'm going to measure the amount of time it takes for the change in the input to cause a change in the output. Some amount of time is going to happen there. Now, I have a reasonable expectation of what this should look like, um, but there's something that engineers and scientists sometimes do where we do a bunch of tests all at once or consecutively and we get an average result. And so I had the idea to, instead of just doing one NOT gate, I'm going to do six NOT gates all simultaneously, and that'll give me a better idea of the average amount of time that it's going to take. And there's also something else I'm going to do. It's easier for me to measure um, the time difference if my A and A naught are in phase. Or I shouldn't say A naught, but my output signal, the signal I'm looking at. And we know with knots that if I invert and then invert again, I'm just back to my original input. So A, A naught, A, A naught, so on and so forth. And so theoretically, if I measure at this point, at this point, and at this point, I should expect to see A, exactly my signal in, is exactly my signal out, of course, with some sort of delay. And so I'm going to do just that. I'm going to measure at these three points. And so now we know that if I'm measuring at this point, there's two diodes, and then four, and then finally six diodes. I'm going to measure that time and see how consistent um, the time delay increases across these. Let's go over to the circuit. I've just got a 74 series six channel NOT gate, and I've already got um, it wired up to have all six of them um, feeding in or daisy chained to one another. And I want to look at the three different points. So first I'm going to tap on to my first point, which is just two NOT gates, and let me just do a single here just so we can see it. So there is a bit of a delay here, um, and I've already got it set up to measure the delay, and that delay is around, well in this case right here is 45 nanoseconds, but let me, let me get a more average one. If I just run this, we're at about or I were, were hovering around like 43, 44. Um, now let's tap on to the second point. The second point here. I can just get a connection on it. So now we're going through four knot gates. And check it out. Now our time has increased about 54, 55. And then finally, let's go through all six. And we're at about 65 right now. So there appears to be some sort of constant offset. Um, and another thing I do want to note is if we zoom in, we're seeing this time difference. But if I super duper zoom out, these things are going to seem like they're exactly in sync. And in fact, we're not going to find any delay at all. And I should touch real quick. Um, how did I add that measurement? This is something that you could do manually. Right, I could actually go through and change the cursors, um, but my oscilloscope is actually manually measuring or automatically measuring it for me. Um, so let me show you how I'll, I'll clear all my measurements. And I want to add the delay measurement. 
And so to do that, right, when I, um, my dial here controls what type of measurement I'm about to add when I click my measure button. And I'm going to go all the way down to delay. And I'm going to click add measurement. Now automatically finds um, where my trigger point happens in both of these signals. So, there it is. This line and this line is looking for when this wave crosses this point and this wave crosses this point. And you might notice that these waves do look a little different. This one has a little bit of a slowness to it. I've currently got it hooked up to a signal generator and um, I don't quite have the right attenuation resistor on there and there's a couple problems. Um, and so I've got this, um, this larger slope to it, which is unideal, um, but it's still okay. So now let's go over to what our data looks like. Our data looks like this in Excel, right? And my measurements changed a little bit, but it's still generally this, right? There was some sort of offset. The first time I did this measurement, the offset was around 30. And I think that might be because I added those wires and there's a little bit more noise in the system. Um, and then with each diode, we increase by five, right? And so we can see, um, two diodes, or excuse me, not diodes, but not gates, right? We've got um, 40 nanoseconds, 50 nanos, nanoseconds, and 60 nanoseconds. So um, from this, we can deduce that we've got about a five nanosecond delay.